Hello, hello everyone. My name is Vlad. I am the academic coordinator for Compos and uh, uh, the author of the first assignment that you uh, are doing. <laughs> um, I, I hope you can hear me well. If you can't hear me, please let me know. And uh yes so hope you've been enjoying uh, the 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 assignment uh could you just let me know in the chat how many questions from maths have you done already so we're doing maths today uh, physics is going to be next week how many questions from maths have you managed to do quite a few good glad to hear Two, ten, fifteen. Oh, fifteen. That's impressive. Four, eight, fifteen. Okay, two, one, two, six. All right. So, uh, a very, uh, okay. And what did you find? Those of you who have looked at um, uh, maths and physics, which do you find? harder maths or physics maths or physics do you find harder physics okay physics is harder okay mm, math is harder okay Hello. Mm. and they looked at maths i'm studying math and physics uh, is it required for me to? That's a good question. Okay, um, I I'll, I'll spend about fifteen minutes going through some questions. If you have any, please let me know. So, uh, to be at Compost, you need to do maths and physics. You can do self study. We call it a we call it um, a follow along group, where we send you assignments. You do them by yourself. We don't mark them. You st you come to webinars and you do the assignments. And that means uh, it is a self-study group. But if you want to work with a tutor, you, um, you need to do maths and physics. What's going to happen next? Once you've completed the first assignment, you sent it off. It will be marked uh, starting the 15th of October. We start marking it. We'll try to mark it in a week, more likely in two weeks. And around the 1st of November, uh, we choose uh, we choose a 130-ish uh, year 12 students, and they will be accepted for the course. Now, you ex we expect about 300 people to submit the work, and we'll accept about 130, maybe 150. So about half. Uh, traditionally, we accept about half the students. It's true, it's true, students are based on the uh, on how many questions you've done from the first assignment. Basically, that's uh, that's the. Uh, that's the that's the that's the idea. So uh, the previous two years, so Compass has started three years, uh, two years ago. Sorry, uh, based on the last two years, uh, people who uh, de who did uh, uh, half of the questions or more, they got accepted. It is. Uh, uh, it is mandatory. If you want to be in Compos with a tutor, with an uh, with one of our tutors, we uh, this year we have a nice uh, nice uh, uh, group of tutors. Uh, we couldn't find fifty tutors from Oxford. It's just too too many. So we had uh, we have. Um, uh, So we have some tutors from Imperial uh, and some from Oxford and a few tutors from other places. 
Okay. So if you would, if you want to work with a tutor, yes, you need to do both maths and physics. But as I said, we have a we have a self study group where you receive the assignments and we don't mark them, we don't go through them. You you go you come to my webinars and you do the assignments. Basically, that's that's that. How would you access the tutors? Or okay, completing half the questions correctly. Correctly, yes. I'm when I say uh, complete half the question, I mean half the questions correctly. How do we access the tutors? So, if you've done uh, more, well, if you've done better than fifty percent of students, let's put it this way: if you've done better than about half the students, uh, you will be assigned a tutor, and we'll send you an email around about the first of November that you have a group. Here's your tutor. Uh, please, and uh, then you will arrange lessons with your tutor. You will have, for each assignment, you will have three lessons, three tutorials, uh, one on physics, one on maths, and one going through the uh, past assignment. Uh, how do you sign up for the independent study session? Uh, you, you've already done it. So basically you don't need to do anything else. You're already in. Uh, all all students uh, that uh, don't get in, they will. Uh, uh, so basically, to get in the independent study session, you just uh, need to uh, not submit the first assignment. I'd say I'd say this. So uh, uh, autom you automatically progress to um, the follow along group. We will ask you at some point. We will send you an email saying, "Do you want to join the follow along group?" And you say yes. We we put you in. Um, if I do the self-study, will I still be in the Compass application? Well, we don't have an application. You will be sent assignments by email. Do you finish Compass with a certificate? We uh, we don't print certificates, but we send you a letter of completion, which will say you have done such and such assignments. You have worked so, so many hours a week and uh, that's uh, basically a, a sort of a reference letter from us. It's not that, look, um, it's, it's, it's a good thing uh, to, to have like a certificate, but your certificate is your brain because what we want to do is we want to develop your brain to do difficult problems, right? So uh, we like to say that if you want to be good at sports, you need to train every day. You, no, no athlete, no uh, high-level athlete has ever achieved anything without training. Okay, so people who claim to have run marathons without training, they are lying, uh, or they are—they're not telling you the whole truth. Uh, so if you want to become a good musician, like not you don't have to be the best musician, but even a very good musician, you have to train, train uh, every 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 day. Uh, anyone who can, who dedicates three hours a day playing music will be good at music. It's inevitable. I mean, uh, uh, the same the same goes for physics. If you if you want to be a good physicist, you need to train. So we offer you. We ask you to do five hours a week, plus the tutorials, plus the webinars. So that would effectively means uh, if you do the tutorial, the webinar, and five hours of self-study, that is uh, approximately our eight hours a week. That's so that's dedication. Uh, you will become a good physicist and a good mathematician. Uh, it's inevitable. Because if you if you if you it's just like sports, if you train, you'll become good. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, that, that that's that's our uh, that's, that's the idea of compost. We don't train you for any exam for any specific exam, but uh, we give you s such rigorous training that at the end you'll be able to take any exam. Like you'll you you can take the PAT or you can take the MAT or you can take uh, whichever. Which, whichever difficult exam uh, you're thinking of. 
and a lot of um, a lot of people who come to who come to Compos, they we who never thought that they would apply to Oxford, they did at the end. They did, decided to apply to Oxford, but we don't we don't uh, train you for we don't. It's this is not a preparation for Oxford. This is a preparation for your physics life or physics career. I don't know. Uh, could be the idea. Our our our. Our grand goal is to change the way physics is taught in the UK overall. Yes, we want um, physics to be about difficult problems rather than memorizing uh, memorizing facts and memorizing formulae. Is each assignment as long as the first assignment and uh, how much time will be given between assignments? You will be receive an assignment every, each month, so about four weeks between assignments. And yes, they are the same length. How similar is the physics assignment to applied maths? I'm not sure I understand this question. Like, uh, you mean mechanics? They, uh, by applied maths, you mean mechanics uh, or decision maths? Uh, well, there's there will be elements of like we say, our math is applied maths. Yeah, we don't we don't do pure maths in uh, yeah, at Compos. We all of our maths maths is applied. Uh, is there to do this? I would like to do law. Um, you'd be surprised. I uh, know, okay, but yes, <laughs> uh, because we teach you problem solving, and if you do. If you do law, you have to be good at problem solving, and that's the main goal. Um, of course, uh, one can do one can do a law degree without physics, uh, but um, if you if you have the capacity to dedicate uh, uh, five six hours a week uh, to physics, I mean, by all means, that is uh, physics and maths. Uh, then that, that will definitely develop you. If you look at if you look at the uh, top earners uh, at in London City, if you look at top earners in uh, California, uh, well, pretty much anywhere in the world, a lot of them had a STEM background, so maths and physics. Um, uh, what do we know? Uh, yes, our webinars will be alternating physics and maths. Um, sometimes I will do two physics in a row, but I will I will give you a heads up. But mostly it's uh, alternating. Uh, yes, physics maths. Is there an assignment for both maths and physics at the end of the month? Uh, yes, you receive a maths and physics assignment. The next assignment will you will receive on the fifteenth of October. So the day you submit. Assignment one, you will receive assignment two, which will be due approximately middle of November. Um, unrelated to assignment, but how can consider our GCSE results when applying to Oxford region are the top unis? Well, um, it's difficult to say. Um, they will definitely affect uh, whether you get a whether you get an interview or not. If you have uh, if you have weak GCSEs, you're unlikely to be invited for an interview. That's my understanding. I don't do Oxford interviews, so um, I'll ask our head of Compos is a Professor uh, Alexander Lvovsky, and sometimes he does a lecture on uh, Oxford admissions, and he'll be able to answer this question better. Is it recommended or discouraged to self-teach harder topics in the assignments and does it prepare you for a step? Uh, right. Uh, by step, I, I think you, by step you mean the maths exam. Is that, uh, am I thinking correctly? It, it won't prepare you for any exam. I mean, honestly, uh, the... If you uh, this kind of self-study harder topics in the assignments, of course, of course, it is recommended. I mean, um, 
you do have to balance of course your your life with uh, with compost not to over over, over strain yourself uh, not to look, because that kills all motivation um we want you to have fun we want you to study difficult uh, problems and uh, yeah like the year 10s are given year, year 10s we started doing year 10s uh, this this uh, year and one of the problems from year 10 one of the physics problems is uh find uh, the mass of the universe that's it just find the mass of the universe of course we don't want you to google it but what what do you need to know like i can tell you that the radius of the earth is 6400 kilometers and the pressure of the atmosphere is uh, 100 kilopascals. Just by finding these two, just by using these two data, pieces of data, you, sh you, you can uh, find the mass of the universe. Oh, sorry, the mass of the atmosphere, not the universe. So uh, so it is a problem. It, it, it's, it's a problem where you have to think about it. Sometimes you 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 think about it. You think about it. You're not successful. That's fine. You go away. You go play football. You go uh, you go for a walk. You uh, you go for a row if you row a boat. I don't know. Uh, uh, whatever whatever you like. Whatever you like doing. And you think about stuff. And at some point you just go, whoa, yes, I know how to do it. And then you come back. To your to your to your table and write down the solution. So this is what we what we want you to do. The, you want we want you to think about the world through the prism of physics and just like uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I'll, I can I can I can blabber on forever. Let's do some maths. And I prepared. Oh, sorry. We have. Will we have documents of answers, uh, mark schemes over the questions we get? No. Uh, so uh, we, we we do not release the answers. We do not release the the mark schemes, unfortunately. Uh, just like in Oxford, uh, for Oxford students do not receive the answers. They don't get um, they don't get uh, solutions. Uh, everything will be uh, in the tutorials. Uh, so yes, and uh, but you can you can always come to the webinars and ask me directly, and I'm happy to go through any question uh, once the, once the assignment is over. So for example, um, at the at the end or beginning of each tutorial, uh, I'm happy for you to ask me a question like how to do problems such and such. Okay. Yes, definitely. We'll show you how to do the harder one. Um, and uh, of course, people uh, coming to tutorials have uh, the benefit of me uh, help uh, dropping some hints on how to do some of the how, some of the harder questions. So next uh, next week, I will show how to do. Well, I'll, I'll give I'll give a hint how to do the hardest problem in physics, the one with the boat. Um, anyways, now uh, one more thing just before we start. I have recorded, uh, I have already recorded two webinars on uh, this topic, actually more than two. So if you go back to our web uh, YouTube channel, you can find the old recordings. So I've pretty much uh, covered covered this topic uh, two times now. And uh, the the you can find uh, the you can find the link on our website. So go for our website, find webinars, and find the old webinars. So you can you can watch those for more problems. I'm going to do a different set of problems today. Some of them are very closely related to the assignments. Some are some are not. Some are not that related. Okay, so. Quadratics. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. And uh, just default permission, can view. And you can all access this whiteboard 
if you wish. Um. Okay. You please remove the annotations. Uh, right, so I'm going to start with um, some ideas about quadratic equations. How do I? Okay. Right. So when you are doing, I don't want to annotate. Sorry. Technology doesn't like me today. Right. So um, you need to be creative when solving quadratic equations. So x squared equals 16. So you probably know the answer. Uh, quite a simple one, plus or minus 4. And that makes perfect sense. So I'm going to use my blue pen today. So it's going to be x equals 4. We say x1 is 4, and x2 is minus 4. Now, if you look at this equation, it's actually the same equation. Uh, look, it's something squared is equal to 16. So 2x minus 1 uh, plus 1 squared is equal to 16. And well, that means that 2x something squared is 16. So 2x plus 1 is 4. Or 2x plus 1 is minus 4. And uh, that means that x is, so 3 over 2, 3 over 2, or x2 is minus 5 over 2, minus 5 over 2. Any, any questions here? Is, is there anyone here who doesn't understand what I did here? Hopefully everyone's on board. All right. Don't be shy, it's it's fine if you are unsure. Otherwise, I can I carry on. Uh, and then you do the same thing here. Like, okay, I mean, okay, 2x. 2x minus 1 squared minus 17 equals 0. So, all right, so that's 2x minus 1 squared equals to 17. Now we can't take the, we, there's no s s integer square root of 17, but we can still solve it. So 2x minus 1 is square root of 17, or 2x minus 1 is minus square root of 17. Just because, yeah, and then 2x is equal to 1 plus root 17 x1, the first solution is 1 plus root 17 over 2. So, and here 2x is equal to 1 minus root 17. So, x is 1 minus root 17 over 2. That's x2. Of course, you could expand the bracket first and then use the formula, use the discriminant formula to, to work this out. But to me, this looks like a simpler option because what would it be? So it would be 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus 17 equals 0. 
And so it's going to be 4x squared minus 4x minus 16 equals 0. So then, oh, x squared minus x minus 4 equals 0. You could you could solve this, but I mean, um, I don't think I don't think this is easier than doing this because this is straightforward. You you you've you noticed um, I'm going to delete that. You could solve that. Uh, it's not it's not hard. Uh, but yeah, what I'm trying to say is like. There's always more than one way of doing things. Yes, there's no one way, one uh, correct way, or one, or just one. What, there's never just one correct way. Uh, no, you don't need. We don't work with imaginary numbers in year twelve. Uh, we'll tell you when to do. Uh, so yeah, so here uh, we assume that x is real, and you see that x squared plus three is zero. Now. You could say, well, x squared has to equal to minus 3, which is impossible. Therefore, there are no solutions. But there's another way of looking at it. There's another way of looking at it. Look, this number, x squared, is a non-negative number. So this number is non-negative. Non-negative. And this is a positive number. This is positive. So what you have is you have a non-negative number plus a positive number is zero. Well, that's not possible because, well, x squared is greater or equal to zero. Three is greater than zero. That means x squared plus three has to be greater than well, it has to be greater than 3, in fact. If it has to be uh, greater or equal 3, it is definitely greater than 0. So x squared plus 3 is not equal to 0. That means that there are no solutions. Right? So this is the way I like to look at it, but of course you could say that alternatively, alternatively, alternatively you can say that x squared is equal to minus three. Uh, so x, no, there are no real solutions, no real solutions. Yeah, I mean, uh, further further maths. Uh, you have uh, we will do in year in year thirteen. We will do complex numbers, but not um, not in year twelve. Okay, so let's look at this one. Now, do we need to expand it to find the solution? Do we need to expand this? No, because you already see that this is a positive number. So this is greater or equal to zero. And this is seven. It's a greater than zero. So they're both positive. Two positives don't make a zero. You don't need to do anything. You just have to write no solutions, no real solutions. And that's it. No real solutions. And then this one, this looks scary, but look, it's the same stuff. Look, you need to you need to see patterns. You need to see you need to see the big picture. It's so easy in this question. It's so easy to get stuck into this and like ex expand this. And this will take you a good half hour to. Well, I I don't know. It could take you half an hour to expand it properly, and then. You'll need to square it again because there's a square root, so you need to square to square it twice. You'll have a, an equation of the 
eighth power. Uh, then it's the same thing. It's a this is a this is something. This is something squared. So make your life easy. Something. Something squared plus five. That cannot be zero. That's 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 not possible. Something squared is positive. Uh well non-negative and plus five. That's a positive number. It cannot be zero. So these these things are uh these things are are very often you you meet them and uh uh yeah so no solution so this is what i mean solutions no no real real solutions this is what i mean that you need to be creative when doing uh, when doing equations. So for example, um, uh, a, a common one is like this, square root of x plus three plus square root of two x plus two uh, x plus seven equals uh x plus three um that's two three is five okay so imagine you have this equation of course you can to what typic what we typically do when we try to solve this we square this we square this, then uh, we we when then we have to square it again. Uh, so with then we rearrange it to make to have we will have another square root and then we square it again. But if you if you look closely at this, well you will see that x equals one is a solution. X equals one is a solution. Solution. Because it just works. Because one plus three is four. Square root of four is two, and uh, two times one is two plus seven is nine. Square root of nine is three. Two plus three is five. So we've guessed a solution. Now that's not enough. We have to prove that there are no more solutions, and that's easy to do because you see this. As x increases, x this function increases. So it's it's a growing, it's an increasing function. It grows as x grows, this becomes bigger, and this as x grows, it also becomes bigger. So both functions become bigger as x increases. So the total, the total is an increasing function, and. It can only be equal to five once. So don't worry if you don't fully understand what I'm saying right now. But it can only equal to five at one single point. It can it cannot go like this. It cannot equal to five twice. It can only equal five once. And that is when x is one. And that's it. There are, no, there are no more solutions. So we found the only solution. So a, an equation that looks incredibly difficult, we've just looked at it and solved it by uh, by applying by, by applying what we know about what we see on the left-hand side, what we see on the right-hand side. So this is what, I, what I'm saying, that when you're solving equations, you need to be creative. All right. Now, Let's look at the second example, another one. So x squared equals x. Uh, so x, x squared equals x. What is x? Uh, so TJ, yes, uh, it's a, um, this is, what I'm saying that this is an increasing function. Increasing function. Increasing. 
in order to be five, in order to become five twice, it, if it's increasing, it's one, two, three, four, five. If you want to, if you want another five, it has to go down and then back up again because you have. If you want another five, it has to go down, but it never goes down. It just keeps going up. So you can only take the value five once, if that makes sense. So sorry if. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand. We will we'll have this. This is actually a, one of the problems from assignment three or assignment four. So uh, you, everything, uh, everything at at a, at its own time. Okay. Problem two. Yes. Well done. Thank you. Uh, x equals zero. X equals one. How did you do it? How did you how did you figure it out? Did you guess? So carry him. Karim and uh, Abiola. You did, oh, okay, you, you factorized it. Okay, Karim factorized it. And Abiola, what did you do? Yes, uh, you made an educated guess, of course. Look, if, if a number squared is equal to itself, which number squared is equal to itself? Oh, it has to be one. X equals one because one squared is one. What's the other option? The other option is X equals zero because zero squared is zero. So the first and the second solution. We know that quadratic equations can only have two solutions. Therefore, we found two solutions, that's it. Uh, let's go here. X squared equals five X. We can guess the solutions here as well. So something squared is equal five times that something. Well, something times itself is five times that something. So it's, no, it's not minus, it's just five. So five, x1 equals five. And the second solution is zero because zero squared is five times zero and five squared is five times five. So that works. Could be zero or five. Uh, when you solve an equation, you need to find all the solutions. And we know this is a quadratic equation and the quadratic equations have two, at, at, at most two solutions. Therefore, uh, we found all of them. And this is the same idea. So we have compare these two. It's the same thing, something squared Something squared, something squared is equal to seven times that something. So that something, which is two X minus three, two X minus three is equal to seven, or two X minus three is equal to uh, zero. So X one, is 10 over 2, that's 5. What? Oh, yes. X equals 5. Because it's uh, three, 7 plus 3 divided by 2 is 5. And X2 is 3 over 2. All right. So, OK. Any do, OK, how well do you understand this Question on a scale of zero to 10, please. 10, I understand perfectly. Zero, I don't understand at all. So please vote. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice. 10 factorial. So that's 3.6 million, roughly. Okay. I uh, say to have so have some have some fours, some fives, some sixes. So, um, Ao, do you mind me asking? So, what do you find confusing about this? Which bit do you not understand? Uh, you can use the mic, or you can uh, say it in the chat. So, those who are not, those who are below eight, can you just comment? What's what? What did you find confusing about it?
Uh, because seven squared, because we have something squared equals seven times something. Uh, but we know that if we have seven, seven squared does equal to seven times seven. So seven works, seven works, right? Also zero works because zero squared is equal to seven times zero. Uh, so zero works. I get how something squared is seven, but I'm not sure how it gets to the next step from that. Well, something is 2x minus 3. Some, 2x minus 3 is the something. And we worked out that um, that something is either 7 or 0. So, And that's what we do. 2x minus 3 is 7, or 2x minus 3 is 0. If 2x minus 3 is 7, then we do plus 3. Uh, so we just solve a... Uh, if you do it, 2x equals 7 plus 3, so x equals 5. And here, uh, 2x equals 3, x is... Uh, okay, Alicia, good, good. Uh, would you get the same answer if you take the square root of the right-hand side? Well, I, I'm not sure what to do next. Okay, you take the square root of the right-hand side, and so? Where do you go from there? Because you have a, you had a difficult equation and you've just made it more difficult if you take the square root of the right-hand side, because, uh, uh, yeah, expand the brackets by all means, of course. Uh, you just expand the brackets, collect the right terms, and then you do use the formula or you use factorization. Yes, you won't get the same answer, of course. But that's... Um, you, you do this just like this, without, 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 you don't, without, you do this without any effort. As as any mathematician, I'm a li well. I'm not a mathematician, honestly. I'm a physicist. But um, as any mathematician or physicist, I'm lazy, and I want shortcuts. I always look for them uh, because that's what nature does. Oh no! Do this. You heard like a uh, path of least resistance. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, let's look at some more uh, unusual equations, which you might not have seen before. X squared plus Y squared equals zero. Ooh, it looks like a looks like a, a simultaneous equations, but there's only one equation. How how could it be? Can you find the solution? X squared plus Y squared equals zero. You need to find X and you need to find Y. I think you you know by now that uh, how to do this. All right, uh, Habib, can you can, Habib, you are correct. X equals zero, y equals zero. Uh, can you can you mention why? Can you? Yeah. That is correct. Well done. They have both have a zero. Because if they're zero, they're positive. And they're positive, they, do, they add, don't add up to zero. The only possibility, well done, the only possibility for them to equal to zero is that both of them are zero. So, uh, it has to be zero. They can't be, they can, so x squared is greater or equal to zero. And y squared is greater or equal to zero. The only way for them to be equal to zero is that if x is zero and y is zero. Yeah. And uh, from the geometrical point of view, this is like a circle of radius zero, which is a dot, which is a dot in the middle, which is zero, zero. Uh, 
Ah, Karim. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, we are only we, we we don't do complex numbers, but yes, good good point. Of course, of course, you could have uh, one and uh, i root minus one, uh, uh, but that opens a whole can of worms. So we're not going to go there. Uh, yes, I have to say that x and y are real. Uh, why are they represented as several variables if they equal the same value? Well, two different variables can be equal the same value. Like, I don't know, x plus y is two x minus y is zero. In this case, x equals one, y equals one. I mean, what? Sometimes they equal each other, but doesn't mean that. Uh, doesn't mean doesn't mean that you can replace the variables. I mean, it's just uh... okay. I will. Um, yes, if you get, if you replace the var, if you had just have one variable, you have x plus x is two, and x minus x is zero. Oh uh, yeah, you can still you can still solve it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how to answer this question. Uh, they are they are different. It's just in this particular example, they are the same. Uh, yeah. So this one uh, here, it's very similar. So they have to be they have to be both equal to they both have to be equal to zero. So that means two x minus five equals to zero. That means x is five over two. And uh, 3y plus 2 have to be equal to 0. That means y is minus 2 thirds. And that's the answer. 5 over 2 minus 2 over 3. So even though it is a single equation with two unknowns, it has a single solution. It has a solution, and it's a single solution. So this is quite unusual. Typically, you have two equations, two unknowns, one solution. Here, two, one equation, two unknowns, but only one solution. Uh, and this one, and can somebody tell me this one? Okay, no one has given the correct solution yet. Jed, well done. Yes. It's, the solutions have to be for both. So in order for this to be zero, you have 2x minus 5 is 0. And 3x minus 8 have to be 0. But that cannot be true. At the same time, this cannot be true because x is equal to 5 over 2. And uh, x equals 8 over 3. So that's not possible. No solutions. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm just uh, showing you some unusual stuff. Now, let's move on to 
let's uh let's move on to um <laughs> dimensional impossible numbers for that well you you can definitely solve it in uh complex numbers you can definitely find a complex solution to this uh because for complex uh for complex for quadratic equation a quadratic equation has always two complex solutions Now problem four, problem four is Vieta's formulae. Uh, so this is a new thing. So you haven't done this in school. And um, uh, in some countries it is it is done, um, You but you have done a variation of Vieta's formulae when you, when you factorize. So just remind me, so let's say you have x squared plus nine x, plus 14 equals zero. So you factorize it, x uh, plus uh, seven, x plus two, seven, x plus two equals zero. So that means x equals, x plus seven equals, x plus seven equals zero, or x plus two equals zero. That means the first solution is minus seven and the second solution is minus two. That's what you normally do. Uh, Vieta's formulae, which is given in the assignment, they say that x1 multiplied by x2 is c divided by a. And x1 plus x2 is minus b divided by a. So this is the Vietas formula. The Vietas formula uh, allows you to very quickly calculate the roots. Uh, so let's, let's put it here. Vietas. Formulae. Okay, so um, looking at this, we have a equals 1, b equals 9, c equals 14. So we have x1 multiplied by x2, the product of two roots. So x1 is the root, x2 is the root, uh, is equal to 14 over 1, so 14 and x1 plus x2 is minus b over a, so minus 9 over 1, so it's minus 9. So we need to find two numbers with a product of 14 and adding to negative 9. Well, it's minus 7 and minus 2. x2 is minus 2. So What's the difference here? Well, the difference is that we fi first find the roots and then we factorize if we need to. If we need to factorize, then we use the formula x minus x1 multiplied by x minus x2, which is zero, which makes it x plus seven, x plus two equals zero. So you kind of do it backwards. Uh, is how you show when you're writing the solutions. Yes, yeah, so it says uh, we do it in your head. Uh, it says solve it in your head. That's what we mean by solve it in your head without using the formula, for example. Uh, just write it out. Because you do this in your head. You find x1 and x2. You, you, don't, you don't use any, uh, any algebraic manipulation. If you had the roots, you could find the original quadratic. Of course, we won't do this. Uh, we'll do this in a bit. Okay, let's try, let's let's try a slightly harder one. Sixty-seven x squared minus one hundred five x minus one hundred seventy-two. 
So x1 multiplied by x2, the product of the roots. Okay, sorry, just for this one. Do Does everyone understand how this is done? Uh, I'll delete this. Just uh... oh, Okay, I won't delete that. If you want, if you need to factorize. If you need, need to factorize. Um, does, uh, how well do you understand this bit in the red box? How well do you understand this on a scale of zero to 10? Can you prove these formulae? Uh, you will need to do it by yourself. <laughs> uh, you need to do this. You need to do this by yourself in the assignment. And so x one times x two. All right. So basically, it's just it's just a formula. So you have uh, in here, you have a equals one b equals 9, c equals 14. And you use this formula. So x1 times x2 is c over a, which is 14 over 1, which is 14. And x1 plus x2 is minus b over a, which is minus 9 over 1, which is, which is uh, minus 9. Yes, uh, uh, so Paris, uh, that is true. I'm just showing you an, uh, an alternative method, which is not easier, which is uh, pretty much the same as factorization. Uh, I'm just showing you that you kind of used Vieta before. Uh, uh, it just it just makes it more more straightforward that. Um, it links the coefficients with the roots rather than, because here they don't tell you that the numbers that you're looking for when you're factorizing, they don't tell you that the numbers you're looking for are actually the roots, but they're negative roots here. Uh, because how, what you're taught in school, in, in school you're taught that you can factorize it into x plus a and x plus b, but they don't tell you that, in fact, a is minus x1 and b is minus x2, which is kind of important information. <laughs> because if, you want, if you're looking just for the roots, you don't necessarily need to factorize it like this. You just use the Vieta, Vieta's formula. I, I don't recommend using Vieta's formula for A level. Uh, I don't use I recommend using for for A level, but it just um, it just an, another another um, arrow to your whatever where uh, arrows are kept. So the product and actually this is you will do this if you do further maths and I uh, I understand most of you do further maths. Uh, uh, you will you will do this in further maths at school. So uh, this is a year 13 topic in uh, in further maths. So x1 times x2 is uh, c over a. Oh, of course, Abiola, yes, you can use shortcuts. Uh, discriminant as b squared minus four ac. And is it called the factorial? You yes, you it can be called the factorial. Uh, x one times x two is c over a, which is minus one hundred and seventy two over sixty seven. 
and x1 plus x2 is minus b over a, which is 105 over 67. Now, so that looks scary. It looks scary, but um, what if I told you that x1 is Uh, x1 is minus 1 and x2 No, it's not minus because it's minus here and you have minus B over A. So that makes it uh, uh, plus. So we finish at half past seven today. It's uh, 172 over 67. Yes. I mean, it takes some practice to be able to spot these. But uh, it does work, and if you if you if you see it, of course you could do it by factorization, um, and and that's and that's it. You you solved it. Indeed, you can test it. You can check that this times that is that, and this plus that is one hundred and five over sixty seven. So it works. Uh, I have I have two numbers which I'm looking for. And I know that when you multiply these numbers, you get this. And when you add these numbers, you get this. So the hint is that the denominator is 67. That means that uh, one of the numbers is 67 denominator. And they multiply. Well, I'm I'm just going like saying, oh, what if one of them is one? Oh, it actually does work. If one of them is uh, sorry minus one, that it works. So it just I tested. I tested one. Tested minus one, and minus one worked. That's how I got minus one. And once you find one answer, it's easy to find the other one. Basically, I, yeah, I guessed. Uh, yeah. Minus one is 67 over 67. That is true. So minus one multiplied by 172 over 67. That's minus 172 over 67. And minus one plus 172 over 67 is 105 over 67. Look, I'm not um, I'm not saying you need to use this method all, all the time. Um, yeah, but just, just keep that in mind. You can use it. And you will study that in, uh, as I said, you do study that in further maths. OK, so this is a um, this has weird letters attached to it. Uh, so you give basically when you whenever you see something like this, that means you need to give your answer in terms of B. And that means, OK, so we have X1 multiplied by X2. That is uh, six B squared. Yes, thank you. And x1 plus x2 is going to be minus 5b, because it's minus b over a, and a is 1. All right, so which two numbers, which two numbers give you 6b squared when you multiply them, and minus 5b when you add? Yes, Habib, thank you. That is correct. 
Anyone else? I, have, have you, I see you sent me a direct message, so nobody sees your answer. Okay, yes, well done. It's x1 is minus 2b, and x2 is minus 3b. Right, that's it. That's, uh, that's nice. Good. Now there's a very nice trick, and I'm sh and you will definitely want to use this one. Trick with vietas. Um, basically, rule one, trick number one. If a plus b plus c is zero then x1 is 1, x2 is c over a. I can't overestimate how many times you will see this. So example, um, x squared minus 6x plus 5x plus 5 equals 0. So you can see that a is 1, b is minus 6, c is 5. So 1 minus 6 plus 5 equals 0. Immediately, that means x1 is 1 and x2 is 5. Solved. Now, I will leave you to prove this fact. It's quite straightforward, because if a plus b plus c, then x is 1. Well, yes, if you place 1 into the equation, it works. If you 1 squared minus 6 plus 5, 1 minus 6 plus 5, it works. So that's it. Uh, example number 2, 17x squared plus uh, 18x minus 35 equals 0. You notice that the coefficients add up to 0, because 17 plus 18 minus 35 equals 0. That immediately means that x1 is 1, and x2 is c over a, so it's minus 35 over 17. That's such an amazing shortcut. You will uh, just practice using it. And trick number two, trick two, number two. If, if they are almost equal to zero, if a minus b plus c is zero, if you change this sign of the of the second one and it, it makes it zero, then x is minus one, x1 is minus one, and x2 is minus c over a. And um, you have, so example, uh, 6x squared minus 13, so plus 13x, plus seven equals zero. So here you see that a plus b plus c is not zero, but a minus b, you notice that six minus 13 plus seven is zero. Therefore, x1 is minus one and x2 is minus seven over six. All right, uh, how well do you understand the two tricks uh, on a scale of zero to 10, please? Ah, okay, hope you enjoy them.
Hope you're enjoying the tricks. Good. All right. Now, number six, and this is how find equation with roots. So if you are given the two roots and you need to find the equation. Uh, so this is a straightforward process. Now here, you can assume that, uh, for example, you want uh, equation with root three minus root five. And so that basically means, do I have enough time? Sorry. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do this anyway. If I run out of time, then I won't do it uh, in two weeks time. So that means 27th. Anyways, uh, so we know that x1 is three minus root five and x2 is three plus root five. And that means that x1 multiplied by x2 is, oh, sorry, multiplied by x2, yes, so three minus root five multiplied by three plus root five. So that's gonna be nine minus five. Uh, I won't bore you with the details, but it is four. And x1, x4 and 4 is equal to c over a x1 plus x2 is 3 minus root 5 plus 3 plus root 5 you can see root 5 cancels and we got 6 and that's equal to minus b over a Now the quadratic equation um, you can so basically he, from here you can work out that c is equal to four a and from here you can work out that b is equal to minus six a. So the quadratic equation becomes a x squared plus bx, so minus six a x plus four a equals zero. However, because we know that a is not a is not zero, we can divide by a. So it becomes x squared minus six x plus four equals here. And that is the answer. Okay. There's another way of doing it. You can also just assume that x equals one, or a equals one. You can assume a equals one, and you get the same solution. Because A could be anything. Look, um, if you have a quadratic equation, x squared plus six x plus four equals zero. Uh, if you multiply the whole equation by two, you get two x squared plus six x plus four, uh, plus, sorry, 12 x plus eight which has this, the roots of this equation are the same as the roots of this, the roots of this equation. So you could always make a, Z, a, a equal to one. For example, you have a quadratic equation, three X squared plus eight X minus 17 equals zero. You can always divide by three. You can always divide by three, so it becomes X squared plus eight over three X minus 17 over three. You can always make the quadratic equation have a equals one. So if you're looking for a quadratic equation, you might as well just say, well, let's make a, let's assume a equals one. Yes, you can make a, a anything except zero.
Okay. Um, the B is done very similar, so uh, I won't uh, I won't do this today. Uh, problem seven is discussed at length uh, in the assignment. So uh, if I have time, I'll get back to this. Uh, I would like to discuss the parametric equation. So this is this equation is called parametric. That means it is, has Q as a parameter. And you need to find the values of Q for which the quadratic equation has exactly one root. So let's modify this equation slightly. It's going to be Q x squared minus Q plus 1 x plus Q 2Q minus 1. You can understand that this is a quadratic equation where a is equal to q, b is equal to minus q plus 1. Uh, yes, when the discriminant is 0, well, well done, c is equal to 2q minus 1. Now, the discriminant is... Um, in order to have one solution, you have to want to have to have one solution. The discriminant has to be equal to zero, and we know that the discriminant d or delta, sometimes written as delta, but we we use capital D in this assignment. D is b squared minus four ac. And that is b squared, which is q plus 1 squared. I can om omit the minus because a negative number squared is still positive. So we can drop the minus here. Squared minus 4 times a, which is q, c, which is 2q minus 1. Right. And this has to be equal to 0, probably. So we have uh, q squared. That's not what I wanted to talk to you about. q squared plus 2q plus 1 minus 8q plus 4q. Right. You want 0. This is a quadratic equation. And uh, I'm going to be very lazy today. I'm just going to solve it with my calculator. Your calculators can do this, by the way, which is a very useful thing. Oh, it's minus 8q squared, sorry. Uh, it's uh, minus 7. Minus 7. Um, then it's 6. Oh, 1. It's actually one. <laughs> it's actually, actually, yes, I have to do this because it's minus seven Q squared and plus six Q plus one. Does anyone notice the special case? Anyone notice the special case? Yes, a plus b plus c equals zero. So it has q is equal to one, or q2 is equal to minus one seven. How did I miss that? Okay, special case. Uh, um, yes. Now, you would normally think that this is it. This is it, and um, but it's not. That's not the end of the story. They tell you that a quadratic equation has one root if the discriminant is zero, and that is true. But it is only true if the equation is quadratic. 
So can you think of a value for Q when the equation is no longer quadratic? Yes. If the equation, if the Q is zero, the equation is not quadratic and the rule does not apply anymore. It's a, it becomes a linear equation. If, but, there's a big but, if Q is zero, it is not a quadratic, not a quadratic. Quadratic equation. It becomes a linear equation and linear equations, we know linear equations have only one root. So we need to test that. So zero, so zero X squared minus zero plus one X plus zero minus one equals zero and that's zero. So that's minus X minus one is zero. So it has one solution. It does have one solution. There's another value. Q3 is, so one solution, solution. We are not interested in the solution. So we don't even need to find it. We just know that there is one, there is exactly one. So Q3 is zero, and that's very important. This is usually gets forgotten. If you have a quadratic equation, you need to make sure it is quadratic. Because if it's not quadratic, it's a special case. So, the question. Yes, Paris, well done. Yeah, there is a question on an assignment where it has a quadratic equation which has more than two roots. But a quadratic equation cannot have more than two roots. Hence, the only possibility that it is not a quadratic. Not a quadratic equation. Uh, and that's what you need to find. Uh, it's solved. It's, it's, it's very easily solved, actually. And uh, you'll find the solution in one of, the, uh, of one of my previous webinars from last year. Don't tell anyone. Um, OK, so that's, uh, that's that. Uh, problem eight. You need to be very careful when you have parameters that some values of the parameter makes uh, make the equation uh, not what you think, not a quadratic. Um, right, uh, without solving the equation. Okay, I'll go through this. So without solving the equation, so you need to find x1 squared plus x2 squared, ignore that. X squared plus X. Well, what do we do? What do we know? We know that X one multiplied by X two is uh, C over A, so it's two over three. And we know that X one plus X two is uh, eight over three, so it's minus B over A. Okay, so we have this knowledge. What do we do next? We need to find x1 squared plus x2 squared. Well, we don't have it. We don't have it. However, we can play around with these. Let's square, let's square the second equation. Very well. And subtract double the first variable. So we have x1 plus x2 squared, uh, which is equal to 64 over 9. And this is x1 squared plus 2x1, x2 plus x2 squared equals 64 over, six, over 9. And we notice that this thing is 2 over 3. So two times two over three, so x1 squared plus two times two over three, that's four thirds plus x1, x2 squared 
is 64 over 9. And we have x1 squared plus x2 squared is equal to 64 over 9 minus 4 thirds, which is 52 ninths. I believe this to be true. Somebody correct me if I am wrong. I'm often wrong. Perhaps not this, not this time. But that's how you do it. Do you understand what I did here? On a scale of zero to 10, please. And there is an example. So this is extensively covered in the assignment. Um, all right. Oh, well done. Well done, you. Well, a lot of you, most of you understand it. Cool. Right. Um, so, yes. Just, just a few words before we finish. Look, um, the assignments are designed to be tough. Okay. They're designed to be tough. Uh, no way we are expecting you to... Uh, basically, if you sit down and do all the assignment in one go, that means I've done a bad job. Okay? <laughs> that, means it's, uh, that means it's too easy. I'm, I'm trying to stretch you. I'm trying to stretch you to the to the limit and take you beyond the limit of your ability. That's what I'm trying to do. It's like uh, it's like train. It's uh, it's like training. So um, um, yeah. Uh, so if you if you if you can't manage the questions, don't worry. Just keep trying. Keep trying. I'm here to help. Uh, I will. Uh, you will also uh, have uh, have tutors that will help you. We will have a forum where you can discuss problems as well. Yes. So the vectors webinar is next week on the twentieth of September. We'll do vectors. On the twenty seventh, we'll do uh, we'll do quadratics again. Uh, we'll do a different different sections. We'll go through. Uh, we'll go through what we haven't covered so far. Uh, it's going to be every Wednesday, yes, uh, for the foreseeable future. Okay. And I'll try to bring guest lecturers as uh, as much as I can. And uh, yeah, these questions with the solution. Could we? Uh, Helped in Zoom meetings. Should I do the assignment for self study or not? I'm not sure uh, what you mean by self study. The assignment should be your own work. You can, you, you're allowed to discuss uh, problems with people. You're discuss, uh, allowed to, uh, what, you're, what you can't do is uh, submit two identical pieces of work. So you can't do them, basically, you can't do them. So you can't sit down and do them with somebody else. And then produce two identical pieces of work. You you meet somebody, you discuss, and then you come back uh, and do the your own work in your own way. Uh, well, the maths, uh, the maths and physics will be totaled up, yes, but you will need to um, uh, to do at least forty percent on each because if you Basically, we believe if you if you can't do if you can't do forty percent, uh, probably won't be able to uh, keep up with the intensity of the course. All right. Uh, uh, I welcome welcome. Uh, see you all next week. Uh, the question about uh, the uh, five in English language. Uh, hard to say, hard to say, I, I, I wouldn't know. Um, I guess you can redo English if you, if you are concerned. Uh, because I, 
I, I read it English when I well I didn't do I didn't do English GCSE but it was a requirement for me to to go into university and I was 27 years old when I did English GCSE so <laughs> you can always you can always do it yeah The cool way of saying it is, is it differentiating the quadratic, differentiating the quadratic and setting it equal to plus minus. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's an interesting method, Anish. Never, I never heard about this one. I learned something. I learned something today. Uh, yes, thank you all very much, and see you. See you next week, and good luck with the assignment. Are uh, we allowed to search up examples similar to the questions? Of course you are, by all means. You know, use whatever resources you can, internet, uh, books. Uh, yeah, the only thing is just you cannot sit down with somebody else and do the two identical assignments. Otherwise, uh, you're free to use whatever you want. Just the final piece of work that you produce has to be your own. That makes sense. Welcome. See you. I'm switching off.